Hey, this is Stimming. In this video, I'm going to show you the electron analog rhythm. It's already switched on and it's already in front of me, but I want to show it to you in person. Because it's mine. I have it, I had it on stage, on the stages worldwide, when the clubs were open and uh, the youth was willing to, uh, was allowed to go out. That's why it looks a bit used. The biggest advantage of the electron machines always has been that they fit perfectly inside a, a, a hand luggage trolley. So when you see those marks here at the sides, it's basically the rolls from my remover bag. Uh, from the remover trolley and I switched to Samsonite because remover is too expensive and it's not the best quality anymore. Anyway, um, it's used, it has seen the world a lot. It has those those um, air vents what um, have the disadvantage, uh, disadvantage of allowing air to, uh, to float through. That's why it smells. <coughs> It really has a quite a bad smell on it. It was much worse. There was a time when I just when I came back from wherever and I just opened it and, and the whole room was stinking. It wasn't even smelling. It was really, really bad. Like, ugh. oh, here also some vents. But apart from that, ugh, apart from that, it's a very rough, uh, rugged build. Again, a nicely built machine, industrial electron design. I still love it. I, I still think it's incredibly attractive, even when it's a bit worn off. Especially those knobs, they even they they are sticky. I should maybe I should buy some new ones. You can easily replace those. Yeah, so that's the outside. Mm -hmm. I'm still a bit in love. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's switch it on again. What is it? First, it's the Electron machine with the worst name they ever have. Rhythm. 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 The rhythm, the rhythm, what the... I don't get it. It's really a bad name, actually. I always stumble upon the name because it's not beautiful at all. I get the point, they need to find something, but rhythm was really a bad choice. Okay, anyway, what is it? It's a hybrid. That means it's basically, it's an analog drum synth. But with a, of course, with a digital heart, all of them have a digital heart, except the DRM1 from Vermona, which is purely analog. Um, but the Tanzbeer, all of them, they are controlled digitally, even when the actual sound is made in the analog domain. Here it's the same, but they went kind of like a big step further and combined it with a real simple engine. So it has an analog oscillator, it has an analog multimode filter, and even an, uh, an analog um, overdrive and VCA, which is controlled digitally. That makes it not a VCA, I think. It's a DCA, probably, digital controlled amplifier. It has then digital effects, reverb and uh, 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 delay, and the sample engine. So it's an eight voice drum computer with pads, so you can theoretically, you can play, you can play them just like a normal drum computer. But then it's like one of the biggest flaws of this machine. I think all of the first generation rhythms have this problem. The pads are incredibly hard to play. Like, you see, it's not triggering, it's not triggering. Okay, that's the worst actually. That's the, like, yeah, can easily tap it. It's not triggering. Yeah. So it's really like, um, allow me to say, if they really fucked up something big time, then it's the pads. Apart from that, um, still, it's, it's a fascinating de device. Why? The combination between an analog and the sampling voice is very, very tight. And you can see it here, synth and sample. So what it basically does is, let's go back to the bass drum and I play the bass drum, I play the sounds on the lower, on the um, sequencer, knobs because those are really not playable. So the bass drum, yeah? Right now it's a sample. I can loop the sample. The envelope, yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, bit 
introduction. Oh, and analog overdrive in any of the voices. Not only in the voices, also in the master out. Like this, everything is chained on the on the master out, and there's an analog. Um, distortion as well. I don't know what the compressor. I think the compressor. Maybe the compressor also is analog. Could we have a look? Of, uh, let's let's talk about that later. So that's the sampler. Yeah. What I did is I looped it. That's the bass drum. Here is the standard electron list of 127 samples, which you can load via the. Oh, I sampled the Vixi drum. Anyone remembers the Vixi? Factory. Yeah. So you can like you have you you, you have the D plus drive or whatever they call it, and then from there you can load it into the list of 127 samples. And that's how you kind of fill the machine. That's 127 per project. That means practically for me when, when I was playing live. With this machine, it, it's not possible to, to play more than like 24, 25 tracks because usually I have the bass drum, the clap, the two hi hats. It's like five, six of the original drum samples from the track, which um, gets you to 128 very, very fast. So that's really like one of the, the it's like electron behavior. It is what it is. But the sampler then goes into the filter together with the synth. I come back to the synth in a second. Together with the filter, which has a dedicated envelope, and it's a real analog filter. Dream space drum. Okay. Nice. So filter. Yeah. The start point also works. But you can you don't have a looping function, so you can play you can only tweak the start and the end point of the sample and that's it. By the way, this is the Mark One. The Mark II is uh, has the bigger form factor, which I don't like. Um, I never liked it. And the uh, Mark II basically has the record functionality from the Digitact. The way you sample something in the Digitact, they kind of um, put this functionality inside the hybrid machine. That's what. Uh, well, that's basically the only thing which what is really different to this machine. So I was talking about the filter. It's a real analog filter again. It's nice. It really is. Curious, does it work if I switch off the sample? Yeah. So that's only the filter. Nice, isn't it? Only filter resonance, yeah. That's what analog filters can do. It's it's an impressive um, low pass, band pass, high pass to different modes, um, a band notch and peak. The amp has two sends: attack, release, hold, and decay. Like it's a three-stage envelope, a real analog overdrive, and all of this is combined with. Let's get to the really interesting part: the analog. Synth. It's a real analog drum synth in there. And what they did was to kind of build um, specialized circuits for special tasks. In the manual, it says it's what makes them special is the digital, um, the way the, the the way they speak to the um, to the analog circuit, which is interesting because here are the different types of sounds the bass drum as you see bass drum voice is allowed to play and they somehow found a way of like imp uh, implementing new models so there, there must have been something in the design from the very beginning where they um, kind of kept it open and neutral and opened so many paths of speaking to the actual core to the oscillators that they um, still could invent new synthesizers out of the one they already built in. That's 
pretty cool, isn't it? So to have that, I switch that off. Okay, open up the filter. How does the bass drum hard sound? Bass drum classic. Bass drum FM. Bass drum plastic. Bass drum silky. Bass drum sharp. And then it can, this one can play snare drums. The actual snare drum voice can also have snare, hard, classic, FM, natural, and some bass drum models. I'm saying that because the, um, the toms and BT, bass tom, for example, the bass tom can only play a bass tom or tone. And it sounds like this. It has a transit at the beginning, which they change the shape. A little bit of noise, but not too much. Only just a short noise. Yeah. So I have to say, I personally, I like this bass tom very, very much. Not, not the noise, only the... Why? Because it's round and warm. <laughs> yeah. Could be a bass drum, actually. Okay, let's get back to the actual bass drums. Mm -hmm. Because you might already imagined what I think about those. Snap mount, sweep time, yeah, okay. Different wave form. You know what? I just. Let, let's let's use those. Okay, another model. A different velocity. Little bit of analog overdrive. Oh, I'm too loud, sorry. I'm applying 7 out of 128. You want to hear how 128 sounds? Not good, no? <clears throat> Another model, model the FM. That's quite nice. It's pretty good. I know, I'm sorry, you guys in the laptop speakers, you won't actually hear nothing more than a click, click. But um, there's, there's quite a, it, it, how, do they, how, do you, how do you say it packs a punch? It's quite a lot. Still. Um, nah, <laughs> it's not the, it's, um, in the end, the bass drums aren't very impressive. None of them. I'm afraid to say, yeah, it is just what it is, yeah. Also the snares, I just do something very, very stupid, stupid easy here, okay? Some more noise. Also here, if I open up the noise decay, yeah. that's nice. Um, I think I'm wrong here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one's quite okay. The classic snare drum hard. 
That's the longest decay. Let me shorten the bass drum a bit. Let me put some reverb because it's so dry. It's so fucking dry. Hi-hat. What do we have here? Classic, metallic, open hi-hat, classic. Open hi-hat, metallic. Hi-hat, basic. Oh, that's one. that one's new, I think. Transient decay. Slay reset, okay. Okay. Long reverb. I said I like the bass tones. The bass tone. Okay. There's a chromatic mode where you can play either the synth or the samples or in combination uh, chromatically. By the way, in the setup or trigger page, yeah, um, you can switch them off and on. It's possible to even switch off the LFO and the envelope and the lower. Uh, in the lower line, the upper one is node in velocity, length, and trigger condition as usual. If I plug in, and then we have the electron trigger conditions. All of them, which is very nice, very good. Hello, hello. Switch it off. Okay, so the chromatic mute. Is it muted? Where am I? Here. Ah, uh, yeah, I switched off the synth, that's why. Let me make it... Oh, sorry. Advanced. This one is twice the time. So that's the bass tom, yeah? I think that's pretty cool. The last one is a little bit... Uh, the last one isn't loud enough. Oh no, it's not long enough. There you go. Okay, what else do we have? The buttons up here switching the different modes, so you don't have to use too many shift functions even when the red ones are underneath, but you don't necessarily need them too much. Uh, a specific mute mode where you can mute stuff and you can also make a mute group like this, you see, and then when I leave, poof. That's quite nice. Um, the chromatic mode where you can play, is it on? No. This also you can go deep or very high. making the woodpecker here. <laughs> it's really, oh, my finger are already hurting. Those are aftertouch responsive and you can apply, um, apply velocity to four different parameters and basically all of the parameters from the engine and also aftertouch is, um, that's the same and yeah, there's this track, Der Garten of mine, where the bass um, has a whoop, whoop. And this is basically the bass tone with the filter being opened by the aftertouch of the pads here. Let me show you if I can make it. 
Okay, very long, filter closed. After touch to filter. Okay, I have to um, velocity to volume off, so it's always on. You get that? Yeah? It's too long, sorry. Okay, um, this is possible, but it's really because the pads are so unfriendly to play, it's not very inviting. I don't know how the pads at the Mark II are. Maybe you can write it down in the, in the comments what you think of the pads of the Mark II. For me, the best pads out there are the one on the Native Instruments Machine and... Hmm. Okay, where was I? Chromatic. Um, a specific mute mode, then the effects. And then you see scene and performance. What do they do? I think at one point Electron thought, okay, let's, um, so we have this very complex um, hybrid combination of uh, a real sample engine in combination with an incredible, flexible, maybe not the best sounding, but at least very flexible analog path. Why not make it more complicated? So they invented the scene mode and the performance mode, which are basically the same with one difference. Let me show you the scene mode first. I press function and open, no, I open up a scene, a scene two and press function, and then it's in a lock mode. I can go to the bass drum here. And while I hold the activated scene two, I can um, tweak the bass drum. Oh yeah, let me do this as well. Can I open up the... Uh... Okay, can I do this? Okay. Yeah! The, here I do the same. Okay, let me make this longer. Like a, it's a way of bending the whole groove into something completely different and then switch between a new state and the old state, the basic state. I think there's something in here already. Too loud. Let's see what the scene does. I think I want to change the snare a bit on scene two. Hello. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. Okay, the performance mode basically does the same with the difference that it um, interpolates to the max vol um, the max parameter that you define. Practically, that means we could do the same just as before, but it's dynamically played via the aftertouch possibility here. So let me do something simple to give you an idea of what it could do. I switch on performance one. Do this on, put this on the bass drum. And I just apply this one to also switch that off and a little bit reverb in there. And I also want to have, no wait, I just want to have a long reverb.
So those are the two modes. Sounds very, very powerful, and uh, it is. Practically, it's a very good example of the difference between reality and the possibilities in reality and their, um, their use case. Because practically, I like as, as weird as it sounds here, it's basically, it's way too much for, like, for using it like, practically. Um, a friend of mine, Sebastian, says that he's using it for just for making presets of like something very simple, just like a cut of, of, of the bass or just some volume changes. Um, but for using it to completely morph the groove into something totally out of space, it's not somehow it, it doesn't it doesn't work out. It's strange, especially if you have 16 of those, like being able to follow that mentally is close to impossible. Whereas the crossfader on the Octa track, if you remember, it, it's basically the same functionality as the performance mode, but it's only one, it's only one direction where you can go. And there it's like, let's say it's easier to be brave enough to go that path. Having, I said 16, of course, it's 12 variations. Um, this in a, in a very weird way is too complicated. I cannot explain it differently. Okay. Let's show you some more grooves. Mm -hmm. um, the effects. So we talked about, no way, um, we talked about the analog signal path. I showed you bass drum snare, oh yeah, there's a clap. And it's only that one, the classic clap. Is it on? Yeah, just let me show you just the clap. Um, it has a very long clap number. And I was like, who, who needs that? And clap rate. But if you shorten it with the envelope, it makes sense. Right? Ah, that, that's one. Okay, use the filter. Which one? No. It's not the most useful clap I ever had, but it's it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Static one, random one. That's what a clap is. A clap is. Yeah, I mean, it's okay, but I, the, hmm. it's my personal opinion. I never really, really used it. Uh, the toms, what do they allow? X-tom classic, what is it? Uh. Tom, without reverb, just the pure tom. No noise. Oh, wait. Okay, short noise. There's some overdrive. Yeah, that's a trump. The other one again. Okay, then the hi-hats. Okay, it's both those two we already mentioned. Color. Mm -hmm. Classic analog hired and the metallic one. Mm -hmm. And then there's the cowbell, classic and metallic, O oh, and symbol. No more words about it. Wait. You could play this. But it's really 
does someone need that? I don't know. Okay, those were the sounds. There's not. The, there is also the symbol, but I don't talk about the symbol. Um, the sequencer is the standard electron sequencer in all its glory, with retrigger, which is very nice. Let's go to another. Mm -hmm. That's a groove which fit to my Tanz für drei track. So the gain staging of the machine. Unfortunately, it's not the easiest because of, and probably because of all the, the hybrid um, conversion thing. By the way, I'm not brave enough to guess how many conversions per voice do happen in here. It's probably not too much actually, because like the, the, the sampler is um, put on top the analog. The sampler, of course, it's converted into the analog path. Then there's the, yeah, it's probably not too much. So it's not that they need to put in 32 ADDA conversions in here, but maybe it's 16 or something. I don't know. Didn't I say I'm, I'm, I'm not brave enough? So in the end I did. Hmm. <laughs> okay, it's my fault if someone's getting angry. All right, the, the, the gain staging isn't the easiest because of the distortion and compressor on the master out. So it is possible here the great out ones are with the effects are the um, delay and reverb effect of course but then there's a distortion it's a real analog distortion that means uh -oh. even the delay becomes angry again <laughs> That's what I love Electron for, especially when this happens on stage and you don't know why. Um, the distortion is, I, I have a guess, and the guess is where they found out how good the distortion in here, or how, especially in low ranges, um, either in one voice at the end, in the amp page here, the overdrive, um, it's pretty good. And I have the guess that from there they um, built the heat which is a nice kind of companion, but in the end it's just like making things more aggressive. But it's, I don't know, Electron allows you to, to, to stay clean with just a tiny little bit of dirt or, or um, a little bit, not the cleanest texture, making it a bit interesting. So everything which comes out of this device in every sample has a bit of roughness to it, but it's definitely not real dirt. It's just a bit rounded and a bit distorted just in the moment where it's gonna be played through this machine. Which I had the thought this morning that it might be the technology is pretty much it's an analog mixer, not the most expensive one, not, not Behringer, but like a Mackie or something, um, where they use the input gain you know, in the, in the beginning of the channel, um, you can overdrive it any analog, uh, any analog mixer you can overdrive. And somehow they use this here a lot. What I'm saying, the gain changing is not easy because the range from what it spits out is very, very broad. So here the compressor does something weird right now. It's quite an aggressive compressor. I don't know if it's an analog one, to be honest. I think it's an analog compressor, but I don't know. Please don't don't be mad at me if I'm telling if I'm saying bullshit. I do this quite often. So that's a compressor. That's a clean signal. Mm, it's better. Mm -hmm. Something's gonna something's going wrong here, isn't it? Ah. 
button. I've got no clue what actually happened right now. Maybe I just reached the inter I, I, I clipped one converter or something. Maybe it's a digital compressor and I clipped the converter. I don't know. Some more grooves. I think I made this one after seeing a documentary about people in Africa playing something very, very simple on very simple drums and it made me crazy. I was just going like days after. Yeah, it was much better in the documentary. Okay, scene again. Oh, I have a performance here. Okay, I tried to do like a, some kind of fill and mm -hmm. another one ah the Amadou hey acid poly song for Isabel do we have performance here again? Yeah, okay. Conclusion. What I really like about the machine is the consequence or the braveness in the combination of the analog and the sample path. Um, having those combined so close to each other, and I don't know how many conversions are happening in there, it's very, very impressive. And this opens up a lot of possibilities. Think of a sample and just add a little bit of an analog tone to it. Nevertheless, the analog path isn't the best sounding. I just can say it again, and isn't very inspiring in its sound. On the other hand, you really need to combine it with the samples. Still, it's very, very brave from Electron to build something like that, and um, it's a, definitely a win for the worldwide instrument, um, electronic instruments feel. So <laughs> it's it's fascinating. <laughs>